in this movie, the second movie in the drawing tool section. We're going to take a look real briefly at all the drawing tools and how they start working with Anime Studio. Now, in the movies that follow in the section, we'll be looking at how to use these tools to get very sophisticated shapes and some of their capabilities, which are actually a little bit hidden unless you know where to look for them. But on first blush, you'll go, man, there's hardly anything to draw with, especially if you're coming from something like Adobe Illustrator, where there is a, a whole palette of drawing tools. We don't have any shape tools other than a rectangle and an oval tool. I'm over here in the left side in the tools palette. We also have a freehand tool, which is keyboard shortcut F keyboard shortcut E for the rectangle tool. The oval or circle tool is keyboard shortcut L. And the arrow tool doesn't have a shortcut at all. Let's take a quick look at the freehand tool. To use this tool, you simply move over your workspace with the tool selected, click your mouse and drag. Pretty easy. But here's where things get interesting. If you happen to have something like a Wacom tablet in your studio with a pen, you can go ahead and use the freehand tool to create an entirely different kind of shape and that is one that picks up the pen pressure as you draw. I'll do the same thing, but now instead of a mouse, I happen to have my pen for my tablet engaged. I'll go ahead and press real lightly and start drawing, and then I'll press a little heavier, a little bit lighter, and then heavier again. As you can see very, very easily with the tablet, you can get some nice organic thick and thin lines, which are a wonderful time saver when you start creating your characters in Anime Studio. If you don't have a pen and a tablet, don't feel like you're left out in the cold. Anime has given you some tools to get some thick and thin variety that you can control very easily inside Anime, and we'll look at that in just a second. First, I want to draw a couple primitive shapes just so you can have those to, to compare to, and we can use the thick and thin tool on those as well. Keyboard shortcut E for rectangle. I'll select that, and I will click and drag. You can get any shape, uh, thick or high, height and width to it. If you hold the shift key, like most drawing packages, you'll be constrained to the same exact dimensions for width horizontally and vertically. Likewise for the circle tool, keyboard shortcut L. I'll click and drag, and it always draws from that upper left-hand corner. Hold the shift key, and we get our perfect circle. Well, let's come back to that thick and thin question, like this line we had drawn with a tablet. I'll use my direct selection tool, G. I'll click on the line segment between the two nodes on this first line we drew with the freehand tool. I'll click once on the line and it automatically selects the entire object. Likewise over here if I click in the middle of the object it selects the whole thing, but if I click only on one node at a time it will select just that. If I happen to draw with my tool engaged with the lasso mode on, that's shown up here in the upper right hand corner, I can select those two. Let's come back to our freehand line. And now we'll look at ways that we can adjust the thickness of this line, similarly to what's going on right here. I'll come over here to my line thickness tool, or width tool in this case. You can get to it with keyboard shortcut W. With this entire object selected, I will click on the object and drag my mouse to the right. As I do that, the line gets thicker. You'll notice at the very top of the work area, you also have a window that allows you to numerically adjust the line width if you want. But here's where we get the variability into it right here. If I only wanted to work on one point at a time, I would go ahead and come back to keyboard shortcut G. I'm going to deselect that and maybe just select one point. I'm going to press the keyboard shortcut W for the width tool again. And now I will click on that area and drag it down. Now we've got a small finish to that. If I come over to this little node, I can select it individually as well and drag that down. If I grab this one in the middle, I can make it thicker. So you've got this ability right here to go ahead and adjust line width node by node if you want to. On a rectangle here, you can do the same thing. Click on a node and drag it up, same thing on the circle. So it becomes very easy to add some of this variability. If you wanted to adjust multiple nodes at once on this other line, well, the thing you would do is keyboard shortcut G for the selection tool. Use your lasso tool to go ahead and grab just those nodes. Come back to the width tool by pressing W. Then you can go ahead and drag and only increase the line width of those. So if you've got a lot of line work, to create a variable look to it is a little bit more work than using a tablet, but it is possible. Now let's take a look at some of the other tools we have available to us. 
We have all of our SKU tools, and we looked at those briefly when we were going through our interface working with the different palettes we had. I won't need to demonstrate those. We've got our rotation tool where you can go ahead and click and adjust those. So it's really intuitive stuff here. Something I did want to point out, especially on something like this circle right here. Let me come back and select that with the keyboard shortcut G. I'll select that object is we have the ability down here, I'm back over in the drawing tools on the left, click on a node, and drag it up, same thing on the circle. So it becomes very easy to add some of this variability. If you wanted to adjust multiple nodes at once on this other line, well, the thing you would do is keyboard shortcut G for the selection tool. Use your lasso tool to go ahead and grab just those nodes. Come back to the width tool by pressing W. Then you can go ahead and drag and only increase the line width of those. So if you've got a lot of line work, to create a variable look to it is a little bit more work than using a tablet, but it is possible. Now let's take a look at some of the other tools we have available to us. We have all of our SKU tools, and we looked at those briefly when we were going through our interface working with the different palettes we had. I won't need to demonstrate those. We've got our rotation tool where you can go ahead and click and adjust those. So it's really intuitive stuff here. Something I did want to point out, especially on something like this circle right here. Let me come back and select that with the keyboard shortcut G. I'll select that object. Is we have the ability down here, I'm back over in the drawing tools on the left, of sharpening or smoothing these different nodes out. Right now in the circle, everything is very, very smooth. If I come over here to our little peak tool, keyboard shortcut P, I can change it very quickly into something that's not a circle at all. It's a fast way to create a diamond if you wanted to. If instead I come back and select the Smooth tool, then we get our circle back. Well, let me click off that for a second right here and just select one point. If I come back to the Peak tool now, with that point selected, then we've got a sharp little point right there. Very easy to smooth those lines out, sharpen those lines out. In our next movie, we'll go ahead and take a look at working with organic shapes and we'll look at some of the hidden shortcuts that these tools have to accelerate creating little things like this peak down here that we just saw.